Hi guys, I'm Johanna. Welcome back to my channel. Um, didn't start off good today. I broke my podcast mic. <laughs> my lovely gold Yeti Nano, which has been really good. Um, listen, that's because the little USB port acceptor, um, it broke off and it now it, it's just living life to the full inside there. Great, so sorry if the sound is not really great on this one, we're gonna have to rely on the camera mic. Okay, today's vid, just quick and simple, I wanted to show you another little snippet of the BAM, Builders of the Ancient Mystery documentary that I got to narrate recently, because I think it does a really, really good job of breaking down a lot of the science and a lot of the stuff, which initially is a bit like, whoa, that's a lot of clever stuff to be digesting, but, I think they do a really good job of breaking it down with really great visuals. So I wanted to show you a little snippet and if you wanted to see any more of it, then of course you can click the link in the description. You can watch the whole documentary with your family and your nan and popcorn. Yeah, so this little snippet I have uh, chosen because it is about the pyramids of Giza specifically and all of the maths that goes into those pyramids because I think it's just, it's just mind blowing. And the more that you look into it closely, the more incredible this structure is. So I'm not gonna waffle on, I'm gonna let me waffle on properly um, as per the script. So here we go, ooh, here we go. <laughs> this inscription would have been carved at the entrance of the Plato Academy, but it might as well have been carved at the entrance of the Great Pyramid. Egyptians were taking measurements in cubits, and the original dimensions of the Great Pyramid, including its cladding, are 440 cubits at the base and 280 cubits in height. In 1859, the Englishman John Taylor noticed that this dimension here, divided by this one, would give pi. Egyptologists certify that the Egyptians only had a very basic knowledge of mathematics, and they did not know about pi, nor about the golden ratio. The high chamber, however, is built on a double square, which leads us to the golden ratio geometry. Maths isn't everyone's strong point, but stay with us. First of all, let's quickly introduce the golden ratio for those of you who do not know. The Italian Leonardo Pisano publicized in the 13th century, the Fibonacci sequence, where each number divided by the previous one results in a number that progressively approaches 1.618. It is a number, and more precisely, a ratio between two numbers that is endless, just like pi, but with amazing mathematical properties. But no need to remember all that. All you need to understand is the logic. Since it's a ratio system, we can use its variations, even its square root, which is equal to 1.272. It's been called the divine proportion because we can observe it statistically on average, just about everywhere around us. It's in the angles of minerals, in plants through the geometry of their leaves, the distribution of their seeds, amongst animal and man and art, just like da Vinci showed us. Building when using the geometry of the golden ratio means attempting to imitate nature. But put these numbers to one side, we'll come back to them. In order to take measurements, you need a reference, the meter or the yard, for example, in Egypt, they used the cubit, which they say varied in size. But in the Great Pyramid, its value can be obtained with great certainty, since the high chamber is made with precisely assembled granite. The value obtained through the measurements of this room varies between 0.5235 and 0.5236, or 52 centimeters, three millimeters, and five or six tenths of a millimeter. It is the royal cubit used in the Great Pyramid but then, although these builders didn't know about the meter, their cubit, by some miracle, is connected to it. It can be obtained easily through geometry. This dimension is one. No unit, just one. The length of the circle is this dimension times pi. So here we have pi. We divide the circle into six parts. Each part equals 0.5236, and what we have left equals 2.618, which is the golden ratio squared. These three numbers are connected by this circle, which has a diameter of one. We went to talk to a man who's been working with ancient measurements for decades. Ma fameuse coudée qui fait 52,36, je sais bien que si je la multiplie par 6, 
je trouve 3, 14, 16. Donc j'ai des entrées directes avec du calcul, avec de la géométrie. Le pied derrière, il fait 32, 36. Mon pied 32, 36, si je le divise par 2, 32, 36 divisé par 2, ça me fait 16, 18. J'ai 1, 618, j'ai mon nombre d'or qui apparaît. If I want to measure this circle, I will need a measuring unit. Let's take the yard. So this dimension equals one yard. And this one here, 0.5236 yards. It does not correspond to anything in particular. But if we choose the meter, then this dimension equals 0.5236 meters, which is the value of the royal cubit of the Great Pyramid. This can only be sheer luck, as the meter was adopted in 1795, after the Earth was measured. Now let's take the measurements of the Great Pyramid in meters. Thanks to its proportion, if we divide this by that, whichever measuring unit we choose to use, the result will be pi. If we choose the meter, this dimension divided by this one equals pi, but this dimension minus this one equals pi times 100 which only works with the meter. Same dimensions, a division, and a subtraction. In regard to the king's chamber, out of all the choices of shape, they chose by chance a double square, using geometry they were not supposed to know about, the geometry of the golden ratio. To build it out of all possible choices in dimension, the builders chose 10 by 20 cubits. This dimension here is pi times 10 meters. This is only possible in meters. This dimension here, plus 2 meters 618, equals this dimension. Plus 2 meters 618 equals this dimension. Plus 2 meters 618, this dimension. This can only happen because the room measures 10 by 20 cubits. If it had been 9 times 18 or 11 times 22, we would have the golden ratio and pi in proportion, but not in meters. All of this makes no sense. The meter was set in 1795. Something's not right. Need a break? In a book on the golden ratio, we learn that in the Middle Ages, the builders of the churches and cathedrals also used the cubit, which belongs to a measuring system called the queen. Dans un pied, tout le monde sait au Moyen Âge qu'on a 12 pouces. Et dans un pouce, nous avons 12 lignes. Derrière, on a la mesure qui est la mesure de l'empan. Derrière, nous avons la mesure de la palme et derrière, la paume, qui va donner ce qu'on appelle la quine, cette suite de cinq mesures organisées et organisées euh, pendant beaucoup de siècles, y compris la Renaissance, euh, de façon dorée. Which means, in its proportion with the golden ratio, we see how it's arranged around a pentagon. En étudiant les, les mesures anciennes et surtout les bâtis anciens, euh, je me suis rendu compte que, évidemment, on a des mesures qui sont variables selon les régions, selon euh, les époques, mais celle qu'on trouve qui voyage le plus de région en région, va être cette coudée-là qui fait aujourd'hui qu'on la mesure 52-36. Amongst all these different cubits in the Middle Ages, one in particular, the royal cubit, carries the same value as the cubit of the Great Pyramid. But where does this medieval cubit come from? C'était tout de même celle qui était utilisée en Ile-de-France, en Picardie, en, en cette région-là, cette région centrale. Et comme euh, le pouvoir va dominer le territoire petit à petit, hein, moi je suis en Occitanie par exemple, mais ben, on va passer aussi au sein de la Couronne de France et on va voir euh, des maîtres d'œuvre royaux qui vont euh, aller un peu partout. It means that this cubit was sanctioned by royalty, more than 3,500 years after the building of the Great Pyramid, who just by chance ran into the same unit of measurement. Si je soustrais 32-36 de 52-36, c'est un constat, je trouve derrière cet empan euh, petit comme ça qui représente Quand je le lis aujourd'hui, je le mesure aujourd'hui, ça représente 20 cm. Exactly 20 cm, which is surprising since the span was widely established prior to the meter. By the way, how was the meter established? It was in 1795, in relation to the meridional circumference of our planet, the circle that goes round the Earth via the pole. It was decided that this circle would be divided into 40 million parts, or 40 million meters which then gave us the length of the meter as we know it today. But instead of 40 million, if the circle had been divided into 50 million parts, 
the meter would have been shortened by about 20 centimeters. But why was it divided into 40 million parts? Why not 36 million? Which would have been logical since we divide a circle into 360 degrees. Turns out this choice of 40 million has surprising consequences. See what I mean? Like the maths that are involved in the Pyramid of Giza is pretty incredible. And also big problem in the timeline of human history. How come the meter, the golden ratio pi, how come they're being used in these ancient sites? The meter has been found in Peru and it's also been found in Egypt. Thousands of years before the meter even existed, the meter was supposed to have been found in the 1700s after and only after they mapped uh, the, in, they measured rather the, the whole world. You have to measure the world in order to get the meter because the meter is a little breakdown. It's like a meter is a little tiny, tiny breakdown of the whole measurement of the world. So unless you measure the world, so that means, well, it means two things. It means that the ancient people somehow measured the world, as in they were knowledgeable of the earth as a globe and they charted it and measured it and they knew about it. Or two completely separate ancient civilizations in Peru and in Egypt and probably other places in the world, they just happened to stumble across this measurement and use meters. It's, it's a little bit like, hmm, hmm, I know which way I'm leaning, but um, <laughs> Yeah, it's really exciting. It's really cool. And then just a whole bunch of other questions just really come up. Like, I mean, I would need to fact check and like take my tape measure when I go to Egypt, but I'm not sure that other tombs in Egypt, like in the Valley uh, temples and stuff, Valley temples, the Valley of the Kings, I'm not sure if those tombs are including that same like precision sacred geometry and golden ratios and meters and I'm gonna take my measuring tape though when I go next time because again that's another massive disparity between all the other ancient tombs that we find in Egypt if they're not using that same maths then it's just I don't know this is it's another reason why I don't think that the pyramids were initially used as tombs. I don't have any problem with the idea that later civilizations and later generations use them as like sacred tomb places or assumed that they were tombs. Um, but I don't think the original design, it's not screaming tomb for me. You know what I mean? Death is a very like ceremonial thing. And of course you want ceremony and you want symbolism, which is why it makes sense for tombs to be ornately decorated, for them to be full of things, to have your name everywhere, your story everywhere. People, we do it today, we put people's name and story on, on tombstones. Um, I don't see a lot of people being like, I want the golden ratio in my coffin, and I want it be, to be precise to the meter, and it to all measure up to pi. Like, it's a, it's a weird, um, it's a weird idea, I think, for like a funerary thing. Hope you like that. Hope you could digest that. And uh, I will see you in the next video. I'm, I've got like a bunch of video ideas. I just need to, I just need to actually get through them. Um, and thank you so much for your support. Three ways that you can support me. Commenting, liking, sharing, telling your neighbor about me. All helps, all helps just keep the channel going. We have a lot of hunters now that have joined the channel. They've joined the gang the band. Um, oh yeah, if you want to join my my pretend band, um, we're called the Copper Chisels. Anyone can join and you can get band merch. Um, I'll put the link in my description as well. Um, a lot of you are joining the Copper Chisels band. And if you please send me photos of you um, with your merch, in your merch, and I will repost you on Instagram and Twitter. Um, join the Copper Chisels. If you get the joke, then you are automatically in the band. Okay. Love you lots. I'll see you in the next video. I'm off to do some research. Bye now.